innovation is a word that's very easy to talk about but very hard to do. Uh, but at the EU Open Innovation Strategy and Policy Group, we've been looking at innovation for the last three or four years and published you know, almost a dozen sort of you know, deep reports on it. And there is something very different uh, that's happening. So one characteristic is the idea of um, integrated collaboration and you're everybody working together. And we talk about the quadruple helix innovation where government, industry, academia, and indeed citizens can work together to drive structural changes far beyond the scope of what any, any one organization can do on its own. Uh, we talk about actually shared value, shared vision. So you know the, the intersection between sort of corporate performance and society has been re reconceived or redefined and the idea that we can solve big problems and be profitable at the same time. So that's a real key aspect of, of um, Open Innovation 2.0. Um, in parallel as well, the use of exponential technologies uh, so that we achieve network effects is, is, is crucial. And then finally, and you know, there, we could talk about other aspects, but the other defining one is actually the focus on adoption. Um, because we've had this misconception that innovation and invention are the same thing, but you know, the research from the OECD and so on shows that 80% of the benefits of innovation come from just the widespread adoption of existing innovations, and 20% come actually from the production of, of um, innovation. And if, if you think of, say, even the semiconductor industry, which is one of the most dynamic sort of, you know, um, uh, industries in the world, it just added, I think it's about 0.4% sort of, you know, GDP contribution to the US, but the widespread adoption of information technology is, you know, far, far more um, substantial. So, uh, you know, Innovation 2.0 is also about a culture change where the society, um, the propensity is not rather than resisting change, it's about embracing change. And, uh, you know, President Obama in his State of the Union speech this year said, you know, innovation doesn't just change our lives, it's how we make a living. I think we, we get hung up in Ireland talking about, you know, competitiveness, and there certainly is a competitiveness issue, and, you know, we're getting back to somewhere where we're near competitive, but the real problem is actually um, an innovation problem where we're too reliant on foreign direct investment. And, and I don't position that as a problem in that it's, it's a huge opportunity because we've been, you know, on a global scale, we've been more successful, you know, per sort of person or per population than any other uh, company in the world. So that we have done, you know, outstandingly well. And we, if we can continue just to perpetuate that, you know, we're, we're going to be in good shape. But, what we haven't done well is there's just a couple of exceptions, Ryanair, you know, Glenn Dimplex, you know, one or two others, Kerry Group, where we've been able to grow an indigenous industry. So Ireland without the foreign direct investment companies, would, it, it wouldn't be a wasteland, but it wouldn't be far off. And so I think there's a great opportunity by uh, leveraging the foreign direct investment companies that are here and working with sort of the entrepreneurs and also actually working with some of the big indigenous companies there's an opportunity to create a new ecosystem that can, you know, create more innovation. So, we we have this innovation, you know, gap um, in terms of Ireland, where we're um, sort of reliant on importing these foreign in innovations and then improving them, which is a great skill in itself. But we don't have enough examples. We don't have a Nokia that's grown out of Ireland, and we need to create a couple of those. I think we're watching the birth pangs of Open Innovation 2.0, so we're just at the very, very start of, of the S-curve, and that's what's most exciting, because I think actually we can actually not just be there, we, we can be leading it. You know, Alan Kay, the Disney fellow, he used to say the best way to predict the future is to invent it. And Open Innovation 2.0 is just becoming real now. Now we do have examplars, we have best practice, but imagine the power of Ireland, where if we, we were able to actually, you know, you move to a scenario where the culture is really open to innovation and we can work together. And the product of all our efforts wouldn't be the least common denominator. It will be the highest common multiple. That will be very powerful. We're practicing what we preach. We use Open Innovation 2.0. And um, you know, I think one of the outcomes is, and, and this is really isn't an output indicator, but we've quadrupled our headcount in you know, just three years. Uh, no, that's not a measure of success. And uh, the measure of success is actually the value that you deliver and um, you know, product roadmap for, for impact for Intel, demand side innovation. And one of the things we've learned is that you know, what can be very powerful is demand side innovation. We recently had our uh, retiring, outgoing CEO, Paul Ottolini here in LeakSip, and he shared some of his, his lessons and you know, what, what made Intel successful under his leadership. One of them was around betting big, but I thought the most important one was we win when our customers win. 
So we very much embrace this idea of share, shared value and that we can drive transformational change, but we need to make sure the ultimate end user technology uh, wins. So what we're doing you know, in terms of open innovation 2.0, today the computing paradigm is the mobility paradigm at Intel probably is largely credited with starting that with Wi-Fi and in parallel there was GSM, but we're probably you know, a, bit, a little bit late coming to the market with tablets and phones, even though we had tablets, you know, we were one of the first companies to bring tablets. But at Intel Labs, we're working on the next paradigm beyond that, which is cyber physical systems, and that's where cloud and the Internet of Things come together. Yeah, a very valuable lesson was actually taking the Masters of Business Studies at the Smurfit Business School, and that was a very deliberate decision not to do the MBA, but to do an MBS focused on MIS, and it turned out to be hugely valuable um, because it actually opened up a window uh, to a whole world of research that was, you know, immediately usable. And then I found actually I moved to the US about a year and a half later, and the professors that were actually had written the case studies had the opportunity to to interact them with them sort of you know on a on a peer level basis. So that was that was hugely actually beneficial. So actually genuinely without sort of uh, without sort of playing to the audience, that was a you know a big lesson. But I think actually the other lesson is around innovation that um, vision and hard work always pay off. Um, you know, you you're always going to get setbacks, and sometimes you despair. You take a step and get two steps forward. But if you have a, a constancy of vision and you're prepared to work hard at it, then you know invariably the results will happen. I think that's true on an individual basis. I think it's true for companies. It's it's true for for countries. So countries that actually do have a vision that work hard, they will have setbacks. And Ireland is in, you know is is, is a case in point there. But I, I'd be confident w with hard work and a vision, we, we certainly can bounce back.